welcome to my youtube channel uh, this is your entrepreneurship tutor professor henry buisa of jomo kenyatta university of agriculture and technology in kenya yes my good fan today i want to put this light question maybe just uh a change is as good as a rest. So I'm asking, does history repeat itself? Does history repeat itself? Yes. Somebody, you know, sitting Harris says, history repeats itself, but in such cunning disguise that we never detect the resemblance until the damage is done. And then Mark Twain is quoted to have said, history does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And then Karl Marx is quoted to say, history repeats itself, first as a tragedy, and then second as a farce. So, these are just three of the quotes on this uh, phrase, history repeats itself. Now, I once attended an economics lecturette, meaning a short lecture on business cycles. We were told that business cycles, also known as trade or economic cycles, are the measured expansion and contraction of economic growth within a period. The audience heard that these cycles repeat themselves over time. The audience further heard that with a clear understanding of business cycles, business owners can make informed decisions. It was traced that when running a business, understanding business cycles is essential to success. So, those are the cycles. We are told, look, it starts from here, expansion. When you start your business, it expands, and then it picks up. That is the cash cow. But then it can decline, or recession in, at macro level. Then, after recession, it can actually go into a depression until the opposite of the peak called the trough is achieved. But then it recovers and again expands, you know, peaks and recession and on and, and on. So this teaching is that, you know, yes, there are times that business is good, there are times that is bad, there are times that is growing, there are times that is declining. So it's like telling us, yes, business happens in cycles. Let us not worry too much when it is in recession. Don't give up. And that is like entrepreneurship, thinking, talking, that resist the bad times because it is ups and downs. Now, that evening after the lecture, it, as I repeatedly pondered over the lecture, I remembered my high school mathematics teacher teaching us about mathematical sequences. We were taught that in mathematics, a set of numbers following some pattern is called a sequence if the numbers are simply listed and repeatedly punctuated with commas between them such as the sequence of a perfect square appearing below 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Yes, you have seen that those are squares. Square of 1 is 1, square of 2 is 4, square of 3 is 9, square of... So you can predict the next number after 25 and even others thereafter, can't you? Yes. Now, I came to learn that sequences play an important role in various 
aspects of our lives. They help us predict, evaluate, and monitor the outcome of a situation or event and help us a lot in decision making. But stop to think about it. Sequencing is the process of putting events, ideas, and objects in a logical order. So why is sequencing important? We sequence a lot in our lives. We divide our time into what we need to do first, second, and last. We understand events in our lives by understanding the order in which they occur. Let's look at getting your child ready for school. Yes. Look. Sequence 1 to 10. You know, here. Wake up. You know. Go to the toilet. You spotty. Yes. Wash your hands. Yes. Get dressed. Eat your breakfast. Brush your teeth. There are those who brush their teeth before they eat breakfast. There are those who eat breakfast before they brush their teeth. You know, arrange your lunchbox. Yes, for those carrying lunchboxes. You know, get your bag, your books, go to the bus, and off to school. You see that sequence. And one follows another. And they repeat every day of the school. So, sequences. Now, for some children, sequencing can be a hard concept to grasp, especially when they are trying to tell a story. Now, I often listen to my local FM radio station and I hear the children's program presenter using good keywords like first, next, then, and finally, to cue children in storytelling. You see, this is a striking example of seeing sequences in our lives. Stop to think about it. We use them all the time, and sometimes what we did yesterday repeats itself today and on and so on. Now, there is something about history and repetition. We are talking of business cycles. Repetition. We are doing sequences. Repetition. So, I captured this from the Daily Northwestern. You know, the Northwestern and Evanston's only daily news source since 1881, so they call themselves. This is a columnist, Marcus Thuilia, May 2nd, 2019. I've given you the source. He says, history has a tendency to repeat itself. As memory fades, events from the past can become events of the present. Some, like Arthur William Strauss and historian Neil Hall, argue that this is due to the cyclical nature of history. History repeats itself and flows based on the generations. According to them, Four generations are needed to cycle through before similar events begin to occur, which would put the coming of age of the millennial generation in parallel to the events of the early 20th century. And if recent events are any indicators, American society is inching dangerously close to mirror, mirroring events of a century ago. Yeah, he was looking at events in America and seeing that probably something is going to repeat itself. And back to Kenya, the Kenya National Hospital, the Kenyatta, sorry, the Kenyatta National Hospital morning briefing that was on 5th of May 2020. Heading History repeating itself. How this 2020 pandemic looks stunningly similar to 1918 flu. Yes, we are told 
More than 100 years of scientific and medical advances have done little to change how the world responds to a pandemic. Meanwhile, a new study, according to the Kenyatta National Hospital source, new study looks at how the 1918 outbreak helped lead to the rise of the Nazi party in Germany. One example of the ways such a crisis can dramatically change, uh, you know, humanity's trajectory. Of course, it's not uh, the Kenyatta National Hospital brief, brief only. You know, the Associated Press, the Guardian, the Wall Street Journal, and many other media channels did opine similarly. Now, my philosophy professor, I remember, taught us that there is what is called detective reasoning, also called deductive logic, which is the process of reasoning from one or more statements or premises to reach a logical conclusion. Look at it. Detective reasoning. If AFC beat Gore and Gore beat breweries, then AFC will beat breweries. Yeah, detective reasoning. Well, I leave it to you to make sense or no sense out of that. Now, she, my professor of philosophy, also taught us about extrapolation, which is the action of estimating or concluding something by assuming that existing trends will continue or a current method will remain applicable. Now, look at this joke. My hobby, extrapolating. Yes, look. Vertical axis, horizontal axis. Here, you know, you can see yesterday, on the origin and today the graph is going and now this teacher in cartoon as you can see by late next month you will have over four dozen husbands you know so better get you know a bulk rate on wedding cake you see, at yesterday, how many husbands? Zero. Today, one. Extrapolation. Well, that is how we sometimes extrapolate in mathematics and draw an, an estimated graph. Now, we have just talked about business cycles, sequences, and history repeating itself. I am now tempted to try using in our everyday life. And in this case, can I use them to extrapolate the age brackets of the 2022 president of Kenya? Let's see. I've drawn this graph not to scale. That is my graph. That is the horizontal is age 60, 60 years. And above the horizontal is over 60 years, 60 years plus. And below is less than 60 years. Then that is my, the magic age line. Now, our first president, 1963, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta was 66, 66 years when he was sworn in. Our second president, Mzee Daniel Arap Moy, in 1978, was 54 years when he was sworn in. Our third president, 2002, Mzee Mwai Kibaki, was 71 years when he was sworn in. And our fourth president, 2013, 
Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta was 52 years when he was sworn in. So what are you seeing? A cycle? A sequence? A repetition? Let's see. Look. An over 60 years president handed over to an under 60 years. And then the under 60 years handed over to an over 60 years. Now the over 60 years again handed over to an under 60 years. You know, in relation to the 60 years, we can see first over 60, second under 60, third over 60, fourth under 60. So the question becomes, what is the next age in the sequence? Is it more 60 or under 60? You know, will the president be in 2022, the fifth, will it be over the line or will it be under the line? Does history repeat itself? Well, we say business cycles, sequences, and all those have lessons in everyday life. I'm just using them to see. Do you see any sequence? Do I see that it will keep the sequence or will the sequence be destroyed? Does history repeat itself? Well, if you enjoyed it, like it, share it, subscribe, and please leave a comment or a question below the YouTube. Thank you and have a sequential day, won't you?